Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this session we will learn about the alveolar gas equation which gives us a way of estimating alveolar oxygen even though we do not have an oxygen meter to measure it. I would like to draw your attention to this publication from our group where we discuss the oxygen carbon dioxide diagram and the alveolar gas equation. The alveolar gas equation is a contribution by this illustrious trio of respiratory physiologists. They went on to describe the relationship between oxygen and the inspired air and oxygen and carbon dioxide in alveolar air that is indeed the alveolar gas equation. The trio comprises of Professor Wallace Fenn, Herman Rann and Arthur Ortiz. Here is what Professor John West has to say about the legacy of the Fenn, Rann and Ortiz trio. Professor John West is a contemporary respiratory physiologist. His lectures are available on YouTube as well and they form a very important learning resource for respiratory physiology. Professor West has to say this about the contributions of Ran and Fenn. One of the most productive periods of modern respiratory physiology occurred during and shortly after World War II. The trio of Wallace Fenn, Herman Ran and Arthur Ortiz at the University of Rochester, New York was responsible for some of the most important concepts of respiratory physiology in the last century and some of their work is still cited today. They laid much of the foundations of pulmonary gas exchange and pulmonary mechanics. In pulmonary gas exchange, they exploited the new oxygen carbon dioxide diagram. In respiratory mechanics, they carried out groundbreaking work on the pressure volume behavior of the lung and chest wall. In today's session, we are going to look at one of the contributions of Ran and Fenn, which is the alveolar gas equation. And in the next session, we will learn about the oxygen carbon dioxide diagram. Let us start looking at gas composition at atmospheric air. The total atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeter mercury and of that 160 millimeters of mercury is due to oxygen, the rest being nitrogen. What is in purple represents nitrogen and what is in green represents oxygen. When air is inspired through the tracheal bronchi, water vapor is added to air. You notice that water vapor occupies some oxygen space and some nitrogen space. Oxygen partial pressure therefore reduces to 150 millimeters mercury. Water vapor pressure at saturation is 47 millimeter mercury and of that 10 millimeter mercury occupies the oxygen space reducing it from 160 to 150. The rest occupies the nitrogen space. What about the alveolar air, composition of alveolar air? You notice that there are two gases, two major gases in atmospheric air, three gases in inspired air, nitrogen, oxygen and water vapor. When it comes to the alveolus, we have a fourth gas that is added and that is carbon dioxide. Alveolar partial pressure is at 100 millimeter mercury because some of the oxygen from the inspired air has diffused into blood and some of the carbon dioxide from blood has diffused into the alveolus setting the alveolar carbon dioxide partial pressure at 40 millimeter mercury. Now, let us take away the nitrogen and the water vapor pressures and concentrate only on oxygen and carbon dioxide partial pressures. There is nil carbon dioxide in inspired air. The alveolar carbon dioxide and oxygen partial pressures are estimated with the help of oxygen and carbon dioxide meters. We have seen the changes in oxygen and carbon dioxide concentrations as measured by the meters during inspiration and expiration. And at the end of expiration when alveolar air comes out, the concentration or partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide reflect the partial pressures that would exist in the alveolus. This is how we measure alveolar gas concentrations, end expiratory oxygen and end 
expiratory carbon dioxide reflect alveolar gas concentrations. While carbon dioxide meters are available in the clinical setting, we saw that oxygen meters are not available and we have already seen that estimating alveolar oxygen is useful because it is a good lung function test. So, when there are no oxygen meters available in the clinical setting, alveolar gas equation which is our theme today provides a method of calculating alveolar oxygen. So, this is the same thing that we have seen before atmospheric air inspired air with water vapor added alveolar air with carbon dioxide as well. The alveolar gas equation gives us a way of estimating alveolar oxygen when we know inspired oxygen concentration and alveolar carbon dioxide concentration. You notice that the sum of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the alveolar air in this figure is equal to the concentration of oxygen in the inspired air. It is as simple as that. Sum of carbon dioxide and oxygen in alveolar air equals oxygen concentration in inspired air. This was the relationship that was noted by Ran and Fenn. So, the alveolar gas equation tells us that alveolar oxygen equals inspired oxygen minus alveolar carbon dioxide. We saw that carbon dioxide meters are available in the clinical setting, but oxygen meters are not available. So, therefore, this gives us a way of estimating alveolar oxygen when we know alveolar carbon dioxide. This relationship was found by Professor Fenn and his group and that is the publication in which it was first published. The alveolar gas equation would be as simple as that if we had a respiratory quotient of 1 that is if, if the amount of oxygen consumed and the amount of carbon dioxide formed in the tissues were equal in volumes that is when the respiratory quotient is 1. But we know that the respiratory quotient in a normal reference adult male is 0.8 because we metabolize a mixed fuel. That is, if we consume 250 ml of oxygen per minute, we put out only 200 ml of carbon dioxide per minute. Therefore, the alveolar gas equation cannot be as simple as that. We have to make a small change. We have to say the alveolar oxygen is equal to inspired oxygen minus carbon dioxide divided by the respiratory quotient. If inspired oxygen is 150, 150 minus alveolar carbon dioxide by 0 0.8 will give us 100. So, alveolar oxygen is not 150 minus 40, but 150 minus 40 by 0 0.8. Therefore, this is not 110, but indeed 100 millimeters mercury. This is the full form of the alveolar gas equation. So, if alveolar carbon dioxide was 60 millimeter mercury, then from the calculations you will get alveolar oxygen as 75 millimeters mercury. In the normal case, alveolar carbon dioxide is 40 and therefore, alveolar oxygen will be 100 millimeters mercury. How do we get alveolar carbon dioxide? We have seen earlier that this can be measured as end expiratory carbon dioxide, end tidal carbon dioxide. If you do not have carbon dioxide meters or capnometers, not to worry, we know an earlier relationship that alveolar carbon dioxide is always equal to arterial carbon dioxide. And therefore, if you take an arterial blood sample and do an ABG as it is called arterial blood gas estimation, then arterial carbon dioxide can be used to substitute alveolar carbon dioxide in the equation, because they are equal except in one situation that is the extra pulmonary shunt. So, you can replace the capital A or alveolar with small a or arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar gas equation. This is how we get 150 millimeters mercury as PiO2. It is important to know this, this is referred to as FiO2 
of fraction of oxygen in inspired air. In room air, it is 21 percent, but when a patient is on supplemental oxygen, this will change. So, this is calculated as 760 minus water vapor pressure into fraction of inspired oxygen. The simplest form of the equation would be where P i O 2 is 150 and when on supplementary oxygen you have to know that whole expression to calculate inspired oxygen. So, this indeed is the role of alveolar gas equation. It allows you to calculate alveolar oxygen if you are able to estimate alveolar carbon dioxide or at least arterial carbon dioxide because these two are equal in most situations except extra pulmonary shunt. And why should we compute alveolar oxygen? Then if we know arterial oxygen, we can calculate alveolar arterial oxygen difference which is a lung function test as well. If it is increased more than normal values, we will see what the normal value is later. Then we know that there is a diffusion impairment. This again is the classic paper from Professor Fenn and here they not only describe the alveolar gas equation, but they also say that they found an oxygen carbon dioxide diagram as a very great aid to accurate thinking. That is what we shall discuss in the next lecture. The oxygen carbon dioxide diagram where we have oxygen on the x axis and partial pressure of carbon dioxide on the y axis. The consequence of the alveolar gas equation is that the sum of alveolar carbon dioxide and oxygen can be only 150. That is, it cannot cross 150 millimeters mercury or the inspired oxygen concentration. At a respiratory quotient of 1, we can say that the sum of the two gases in the alveolus is 150. So, if PO2 is 150, carbon dioxide is 0 and if PCO2 is 150, oxygen is 0. Therefore, you can have only those combinations of the two gases in the alveolar air. When the respiratory quotient is 0 0.8, the slope of this will be slightly less. We shall see that in greater detail in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.